And then we're going to give it a bit longer than we did previously. Yeah. Okay, so welcome to another one of our uh, tech talks, uh, which we're live streaming on YouTube. Um, today, we've got myself, Kevin, and Alistair, who's also joining me. And we're going to be looking at some of our compact motor, dr motor driver boards for the BBC Microbit. So um, it's a bit of background. We've sold motor driver boards for the Microbit for, for lots of years, um, but we've recently made some changes to, we think, make them better and also lower cost. So that's the, kind, that's the products we're going to cover off today. Alistair's going to take you through them in detail. Um, we are taking questions on YouTube. So if anyone has any questions and want to message those in, we've got Mark here who's manning that for us. We'll, myself and Alistair will do our very best to answer those questions and um, we'll either do that during the video um, or at the very end we'll try and cover any questions that anybody has. Okay, so I'm going to start off by showing you the products we're going to cover today. If I can just share my screen. Give me one second. Okay, so we've, we've got three boards. In this range, we have what we call the all-in-one robotics board, which you can see here. And this board starts at about £11 um, each and goes down to £9 if you buy, buy more. So none of these boards are very expensive. We also have what we call the compact motor driver board. And again, Alistair will cover this in detail, but this is, this is primarily for driving just motors and this is lower in cost. So £7.50 down to £6.25. And then we also have the 16 servo driver board and that starts at nine pounds and comes down to seven pounds 50. Um, there's lots of information on the website. We talk about the products. You can, you can read all the features and see videos and things on here if you want to follow up afterwards. And we also have techno, um, technical information and related resources. So the website's a, a, another great source of information on these products. So Alistair, um, if we sort of cover these off a little bit. So, um, both these boards will work with the V1 and V2 micro bit, won't they? Yeah, we've designed them that way. Yes, they're compatible with both both uh, V1 and V2. All the features work with, with both of them completely fine. Yeah. And would you say these are kind of for, for classroom use or hobby use or, or both? I, I think they could, they could feature in both. Probably uh, in school, this is perhaps more uh, uh, higher, end of, higher end of secondary school and more creative. Uh, DT or, or computing project where you're building something uh, with these boards and a micro at the center um, but home use definitely but all sorts of uh, home projects you might want to do with with robotics control motor control that kind of thing um, so it would be suitable for both but it's really about those uh, creative inspirational projects that you're wanting to put together yeah and the good thing with the micro bit obviously the micro bit itself has lots of sensors built in doesn't it so you know you've got accelerometers and compasses and light sensors and temperature sensors so you could easily use those sensors along with this board to to, to make something happen Absolutely. you know yeah it could be a fan that turns on with temperature or or lots of you know the, um, you might open a window with uh, when, when it's light in the day and close it at night time using the micro bit sensors so we think they pair really well so should we take a look at these boards in a little bit more detail yeah definitely i'm just going to switch camera briefly so we can see them a bit better great I'm also going to make you a little bit larger. Brilliant. Great. Hopefully uh, you can all see we've got three boards uh, down here on, on the desk. Um, we've got the uh, motor driver here, a 16 servo driver here, and the all-in-one robotics board uh, just here. I've got them all together just so you can see that there are a lot of common features um, between these three boards. Um, I guess first off, you can see they've all got the same uh, size uh, and, and shape. Um, they've all got uh, the microbit edge connector in, in the same place. Uh, they've got these mounting holes here and here, all in the same place. Um, power LED, power switch, uh, and power supply connectors, and this row of um, uh, breakout pins uh, that you can solder, uh, solder things like um, pin strip to uh, for breaking out. Uh, the board. I'll show that a little bit more later. But these boards are, are clearly all in the same range. And, and one of the reasons we've done this is to make them uh, look familiar uh, to each other. Um, and so that you can also, it's possible with, with some of our stackable pin headers that we sell, um, you can actually uh, layer these boards up 
uh, and control them all together uh, with one micro bit, which is a really good feature. Um, they, they all use the, the, same kind of, the same kind of terminal blocks, the same kind of server connectors if they've got server connectors on. Um, so that's all. There's a lot of common features uh, between all of these, um, which makes them a really good set of products to use together. Uh, I guess I'm, now I'm going to go through uh, each one individually, uh, just to give a bit more detail and explain what's, uh, explain what's going on. So I'm going to get rid of these for now. And we'll have a little look at the motor driver board. Uh, if you excuse me while I just, just going to make it a little bit clearer for us. So, I mean, I, I think these boards, these newer ones look a bit friendlier than probably the, the original boards we designed. Yeah, I would, I would say so as well. And um, they've got these nice rounded corners, um, which just makes them a bit, a bit safer and look a bit nicer. Uh, and because they're a bit smaller, uh, they just they just look a bit bit less intimidating. Um, so right here on the motor driver board, uh, we've got the edge connector uh, for the micro bit to slot into. Uh, then we've got the power connector here, um, and then this row of terminal blocks and these ones here. We've got motor driver connections here, so this can drive uh, two DC motors uh, or a single stepper motor. Um, and then there's breakouts for pins one and two on the micro bit. Um, along with uh, ground and three volts, and also for buttons A and B. So you could you could break out uh, extra buttons on, on on perhaps a robot that you're making that's that's got a two wheel drive, um, or you could uh, add other inputs and outputs through those uh, terminal block connections and provide power to them as well. Things like LEDs or perhaps some uh, distance sensors, that kind of thing. So um, those buttons then would they they sit in parallel to the standard ones on the mic of it that they. Uh, yes, they would. Uh, they wouldn't be extra to the ones on the board, but they might break them out uh, to be easier to access in the device that you're making. So they would go uh, alongside it. It would be just the same as if you're pressing, excuse me, A and B on the micro bit itself. Yeah. Yep. So the, the person would just use the on button A press block and, and that would react in the same way. Yes. Uh, yes, definitely. Um, it works, works really nicely like that. And that's the feature of this board. This is uh, it's simply a motor driver board. It's great for driving. Uh, great for driving those motors and for adding those extra sensors uh, and other inputs and outputs. So, Alistair, on those motors then, can, uh, you know, what control do you have? You know, you've, have you got forward, reverse or, or you know, those? Um, for, for, for both motors, because uh, it uses a, it's a dual H-bridge um, uh, IC, uh, motor driver IC on there, you've got forwards and reverse, and you've also got um, varying speed uh, control as well, all of which can be controlled uh, through the micro bit. Um, so you can, on the fly, you can vary direction and speed uh, as, as, you, as you wish. So you've got full control over the motors you connect there. Fantastic. Brilliant. I'm going to pop that to one side and grab the 16 servo driver uh, just now. Uh, there we go. Uh, so this is the 16 servo driver. Um, again, you've got the power connectors here. Um, you've got either this terminal block or there's this um, servo style connector. Um, actually, you, you can you can use with all these boards. Uh, you've got um, the option of using a battery pack uh, with uh, wires just on the end here, which can be slotted uh, straight in, and use a, a screwdriver uh, to tighten them up, just like that. Or um, you might have seen, or perhaps you've got um, something like a remote control car. Uh, connector that's got this servo style connector on and that can be plugged in really easily uh, to this point here as well you can see the switch on and off here um, and that can be plugged in either way around because we've made sure that power is in the center and grounds on either side um, and that way you're, you're, you're reverse polarity protected and it's, and it's safe to plug in and we sell some some of these little cables that can link up um, with, with your battery pack and um, so you've got those two options for powering from a battery pack or you could wire in uh, something like a, a, a wall supply that's got some uh, pins broken out there as well. We've used both of those uh, in some of the projects we've uh, included these boards on. So they're really versatile for, for powering lots of different ways uh, that's really convenient for you. Uh, moving on to, to this edge, uh, we've got this big row of these um, servo connectors. Uh, there's 16 of them, as the name the 16 servo driver would suggest. Mm -hmm. And they can be used to control uh, your little hobby servos. Uh, like this, uh, either continuous rotation ones or um, the standard uh, 0 to 180 degree. Uh, and also you've got, we've got these bigger ones as well uh, that we sell. Uh, this is suitable for powering both of them. Uh, you've got a really good uh, current and voltage uh, rating on this board. You can power with up to 12 volts and you've got 12 amps of current can run through. So yeah, you're not limited at all really in, in the projects you can create with this. Yeah, so, and that, 
that uses that that chip there drives all of those, doesn't it? So you you those um, extra pins on along the top, they're still available, aren't they? We've not used sixteen of the microbit pins to drive these, have we? Yeah, that's right, Kevin. Um, just like uh, on the microbit, you've got the accelerometer sensors and the other sensors like that that are on the microbit's I squared C communication bus. Uh, this chip here. Uh, which drives all of these servos is on the microbit I squared C line. So yeah, that means all the other pins um, apart from 19 and 20 are available um, for connecting things like uh, input sensors or other outputs like, I guess, uh, LEDs or speakers, that kind of thing. So you've got everything else is available. And I'll just show, um, I talked about earlier, you've got things like uh, pin headers. You can either use vertical ones uh, or these right angle ones, and they can solder in really nice to the edge. And you can use something like a, uh, these jumper leads just to plug in uh, really nicely uh, rather than having to solder and desolder every time you want to change something. That can be a really good way for adding uh, extra features uh, to these boards in the projects that you're, you're creating. Fantastic. Uh, and finally, uh, we've got the, the third one in the set. Uh, we've got the all-in-one uh, robotics board. And this one's really a combination of both the boards we've just seen. Um, so rather than just motors and just servos, uh, we've got eight servo connections at this end. And then, although this looks uh, like it might be exactly the same setup as the motor driver, this is actually four motor output connections. We've got two uh, of the uh, dual H-bridge ICs here, which means you've got uh, full control of, of four motor outputs. So you could either connect uh, four DC motors, again, with that full uh, forward and reverse um, and full speed control, or you could control something like a stepper motor, uh, which uses four of the pins. Um, I'll show that moving uh, a bit later on. Um, you can either, you can control two of those from this, or or you could control uh, perhaps two DC motors and, and one stepper motor. Uh, this board's really versatile because you've got all the all those outputs that are on the others. Um, and again, just like the sixteen servo, all of these outputs are controlled uh, on the I squared C bus. So you again, you've got all these pins available uh, for other sensors and outputs that you might want to uh, include on this board. Yeah, so you've, you've kind of lost the input terminal locks, haven't you, compared to the motor driver board. So if you, you were connecting an, an external switch or something on this board, you'd be using those connections at the top. You'd be using those connections, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And uh, just, just you know, sorry, Alistair, just thinking, um, on the older style boards, we had the, the, you know, the bigger, chunkier microbit connector, which, you know, has been replaced by what we think is now this nice sort of slicker, slimmer version. But this does only work in one direction doesn't it for the micro bit that's right previously on these boards uh, you could plug the micro bit in either way and you'd only need to face it uh, one direction to, to link with these uh, but just to make the, the boards a bit more compact and a bit and look a bit nicer i think um the micro bit always needs to face um so the screen is facing this row of pins that means all these pins are usable and you've got the control on the other side of the board yeah. so you want to make sure that the uh, circuitry side of the micro bit uh, is facing the circuitry on your board. So circuitry matches up and screen matches up uh, with these pins there. But there's instructions on the board and there's some tiny words you can probably just about oh, see here. And that tells you exactly which way it needs to face with a handy arrow. So you, you, you never never have to be confused about which way it's going. And that's the same on all the boards that we've just shown. And I think for people who are interested, you can sort of see the way that connector works, can't you? Because you've got those, the, 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 the pads there are on the side, yeah. So yeah, but, then, but they're not on the rear, are they? And that's because yeah. obviously they're connecting to that face of the connector. Yes, that's right. So you can see you can see a bit more easily how, how this is working and linking together. Um, just to talk about power a bit more briefly, I said that the uh, the sixteen servo driver that's got a twelve that can go up to twelve volts um, with a twelve with twelve amps that you're pulling through. Uh, both the motor driver uh, and the all in one robotics board um, can be powered from up to ten point eight volts um, and. Uh, again, you've got a really good amount of current flow through this. We've, we've added a lot of protection to these boards to enable a really good power supply uh, running through. So you're not really limited uh, on power much with these boards. Um, you should be able to do everything you need uh, with what we've got with what we've got here. Make that a, a bit more yeah. focused. Yeah, so they're the kind of, I find them very handy, really. I mean, I've used them in projects before, and I think dependent, I mean, the all-in-one robotics board is, is the one a lot of people go for, isn't it? Because it's sort of, covers it's a mixture of both um, but you know if you want to do lots of servos 16 servos ideal if you want to do 
you know, a motor project where you might want to have some switches as uh, input sensors and things, and the, that's where the, the motor driver board itself would work really well. Yeah. Um, and, and the original one, we had a product, we still do, don't we? The, the Buggy 5638, um, yeah. that's our product code. Um, and that would, that uses that motor driver board as like the brains really of, of, of driving. So, there, so there, although it's the older the older style board that's on that on that five six three eight product, it is the same functionality that goes through this. So you could build a two wheel robot uh, really easily, yeah, with that motor driver board, if that's all you want to do. And it, it's nice that the prices are different for each one, so you've got you've got that variety uh, for for whatever it is you actually want to make at that point. I might be able to just show that to people quickly. Let me just find it. Um, let's do that. Let me just show you that. So hopefully people can, can see this, but this is, this uses our original motor driver board, but you could drop in or use this, the new compact version, it'd be the same. Um, and then we're using some of the inputs on here for things like a line following board. So we can connect a line following board in without having to solder anything on, if that all makes sense. So this control of the two motors, then using some of the other inputs for the center inputs, et cetera. Super. So what do we want to do next, Alistair? Um, I thought now would be a good point uh, to go and think about how we might program these um, boards. Uh, we've talked a lot about the micro bit um, and about being able to control lots of things. Uh, but I guess some of you watching might not be familiar uh, with the make code environment and how you might program micro bit. So I'm just going to share my screen now and, and give you a little bit of a, an introduction to, to programming, um, firstly the micro bit and then these boards uh, in particular. So hopefully in just a moment, um, you will see uh, my screen uh, being shared. There we go. <clears throat> so this is um, makecode.microbit.org. This is the, I guess, probably the most uh, the most common um, uh, way of programming microbits. Certainly, if you're just getting started, uh, it's a it's a great uh, editor that uses blocks. You can see some pictures here, but you've also got the opportunity to switch to a text-based language if you're getting a bit more advanced. If you come to make code, this is uh, the screen you'll see that first time. And there's some tutorials uh, and things down here and some helpful videos just to get started. But when you want to create a new project, there's this big purple button. If I click that, it gives you the option to start uh, giving it a name. Now, I'm going to do a little demo with the robotics board. So I'll just call it Kitronic uh, Robotics. There you go. And it's very happy with the name I've given it. Uh, I'll click Create now. Uh, then you'll see it doing some work in the background and it will pop up uh, this screen. It's just loading uh, the final bits. So this is the standard uh, editor layout. And in the top left, you've got this little simulator of the micro bit. If you're just doing stuff with the micro bit, uh, this is great because you can press the buttons. Uh, you can vary some of the pin inputs, uh, that sort of thing. You can see what's going to appear on the LED display if you're, if you're showing text or numbers or, or images on there. It is really handy just to check your code. Uh, before you switch across uh, to the actual micro bit. So that's great if you're just doing projects on the micro bit. And down here, we've got all the standard uh, blocks. So if you click on them, there's these blocks that you can drag in uh, or drop out again into the bin. And there's some more advanced ones down here. Um, to make things a bit easier to get started with all of these boards, um, Keytronic actually creates uh, quite a lot of uh, custom software uh, for our products. And to add those, if you go up to the cog on the top right, and then click extensions. Uh, it brings up this uh, search area. So if I search Kitronic, uh, you can see here we've got we've got quite a lot of products um, that we've created extensions for um, to make things uh, easier to program uh, in MakeCode. And if you see here, we've got the motor driver, 16 servo, and the robotics board. The pictures look a bit different. Uh, that's because those are just the the old the original uh, style boards, uh, but the functionality is exactly the same. Uh, with these new compact ones, uh, for the software uh, is identical. Uh, you could select uh, any of these three and you'd add some uh, extra code to the, to the editor. Uh, for now, we're going to pick the robotics board because that's got examples uh, that you would find in both extensions. So if you click that, um, again, make code will do some work. And you should see, then see in this list on the left hand side, we've got a new, uh, a new category at the robotics section with a little robotics arm to give you an idea of what this uh, extension is about. And again, you can click on that. Uh, we've got some uh, a standard block of turning off all the outputs, and then there's individual sections for servos, 
motors and some settings there. Um, under servos, um, you've got uh, control of uh, which servo output you've got uh, in the robotics ward, that's one to eight. And then you can vary um, the, the angle you're turning it to. For a standard servo, a 0 to 180 servo, that will turn and set the servo uh, to that particular angle. Angle. If you're using a continuous rotation one, this will uh, vary the speed. So 90, um, 90 is the uh, stationary position, and then you've got uh, reverse and forwards uh, varying in speed as you as you set the angle there. So that's the servo blocks. Uh, under motors, uh, we've got the top. Uh, the top block here is for controlling DC motors. So again, you've got options here from uh, one to four. In the motor driver board, that would be one and two. You can control forward and reverse, and speed is not to 100%. Uh, so you can set that to, to whatever you want. And you can either use it uh, this nice sliding bar, or you can type that numbers directly in here if you want something really specific. Um, <clears throat> and then we've got um, sections for stepper motor control. Now, stepper motors uh, work slightly differently. Um, you can either uh, set the how many degrees you want it to turn uh, from its starting point or how many steps. Um, the, the stepper motor I showed you briefly earlier, um, and often quite a standard number of steps is 200. Um, but you can use either one of these blocks uh, to control them. And it works in a really similar way. You've got a drop down here for stepper one or two, forward or reverse. And again, you can uh, set from 0 to 360, how far you want it to turn there. And, and these blocks are just so simple to use. And you can switch off the outputs here, uh, turning off whichever one you've got. Uh, they're really simple to use and really simple to get to grips with. If you uh, feel like you've improved enough with, with using your blocks, you can actually use the big switch at the top here. And you can flick to JavaScript mode. And you can see this is a text-based language and it's the same functions. Uh, what's really nice about MakeCode is whatever you've written in blocks, whatever you've written in JavaScript, you can flick back and forth between them um, to see how they link up. And a relatively new feature to make code is also they've got a Python uh, wrapper on their code as well. Um, so you can again see here, this is some uh, Python syntax for doing that exact same bit of code that I was writing in the blocks to start with. Um, so my, make code is a great way uh, for getting to grips with programming the micro bit, um, uh, particularly in, in blocks, um, if you're just getting started. Um, we do have some other features um, uh, for coding, um, again, which I can show you, uh, if you'll let me just share another screen uh, I've got open. If you uh, really want to be programming in MicroPython, uh, we have actually on our GitHub page, that's Kitronic Limited uh, at GitHub, um, we've created some examples for MicroPython for, for these boards. So we've got one for the 16 servo driver here. Uh, it's got some example software and example um, functions that you need for controlling in MicroPython. This is when you might be writing in uh, editors like Mu uh, or the online uh, MicroBit micro, micro Python editor. Uh, and then here in our MicroBit modules for MicroPython, um, we've again got um, things for the motor driver uh, and for the Rotex board here. So we've got a, a nice file that you can include as a library and there's instructions on the MicroPython page for how you include these. So we, we've tried to cover both, uh, both key areas where, where programming is taking place. Uh, for the micro bit, which hopefully um, covers covers everyone's needs for how they want to program this. Yeah. So I mean, these are. I think with that, then that makes these kind of ideal for the for an introduction to a younger student, yeah. all the way up to someone trying to do something much more complex. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, it's really good for both of those uh, both of those setups. Uh, so you can start with, with other products with with micro bit. We're starting in primary school. The, these are, as we said earlier, these are more secondary school focused. Um, uh, but you, you can, any, any uh, kind of experience level, it doesn't matter about age, I guess, whatever experience level you're starting with Microbit, um, hopefully those different programming areas are suitable for whichever stage you're at. Yeah, I mean, you can do some complex things, can't you? Remember Dave trying to get his walking at at model working with yes. you know, multiple servos and things? Yes, that was, I think that used at least 12 of the 16 servos. It did walk briefly before... Uh, I think some accident befell it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I've got a question then, Alistair. So uh, we've been asked if you have an ultrasonic sensor that's five volts yeah. and you want to use it with the all in one robotics board where they're generally three volts on the, the, the pads on the edge, the link pads, how yeah. would someone go about that one then? I guess it, uh, it depends what you might be powering uh, your board from. Um, 
uh, generally, if, if you are powering uh, with five volts, say with a, a three, uh, three AA battery pack, um, that's up four and a half volts, you'll probably be fine running that off the same power um, as you've got in those uh, input terminal blocks for power. And then you can run the signal lines out from the, um, the link header, those solderable pads. You don't need to have the signal lines at the same voltage as the ultrasonic power. So you'd connect the signal as you would normally, ground as you would normally, but the power to the module would come from the battery yes. or the power source. Obviously, you'd want to be careful depending on how you're powering it. I guess if you're powering at a much higher voltage, um, you could include a, a five volt regulator in the way, that, which would be an extra component, um, but that would mean that you could use them comfortably together. Yeah, this is the kind of thing we do on our um, move buggy, isn't it? Move motor where we, we actually supply the ultrasonics at higher voltage and then uh, than the microwave itself. Yeah. 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 So, okay, you do have to do that kind of thing occasionally where the uh, where the voltages are different to what the microbit is. The, the, mic the edge connector for the microbit and those solder pads, that is the three volts out because it's the same as the, the microbit connection. Yeah. So you would think a little level shift in modules as well. But I think the key there would be it would be tricky if you wanted to use 12 volts for motors, five volts for ultrasonic, and then the, you combine that with the three volts of the microbit. I think yeah. if you could find motors that work at five volts, then you'd, you'd probably be okay. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And we, we have done that kind of thing. Yeah. So it should, Fantastic. Should work. So hopefully that's uh, answered that question. Is there anything else you want to cover off? While we've got some examples, haven't we? Yeah, I've got some examples. I was, I was, you may have seen me looking, uh, looking away from the camera, just trying to operate a screwdriver whilst talking to you. Um, <laughs> I, I'll just flick to the, the downward camera again. I've got a few little demos just to, just to showing things working for, for each of these boards. So if I flip camera again quickly. There we are, not quite in shot there. Here we go. So uh, to start with, uh, I thought I'd look at the, the motor driver as it's the simplest of these boards. Try and get it all in shot. Uh, I've got a simple DC motor with a nice big fan uh, on here. And I've got a, a battery pack connected. I'll flick it on. And if I press button A, oh, when I've got it in shot there, see the fan turns nicely in one direction and then really slowly uh, in the other direction. I'll do that again. So we've got uh, direction and speed control shown here really simply. I've got it 100% speed in one direction and then fading down to a stop uh, in the other. So it's really simple. That was a really simple four line program uh, that I used uh, for make code. And that's just connected here to, uh, to input, to output one here. Uh, if I flick that off and if you just excuse me a moment while I switch boards, I thought I would show you um, the 16 servo driver. now. Rather than me individually connecting up 16 servos to this, uh, which would take quite a long time, uh, I thought I'd just show you our, our test box for this. We test all our products uh, really thoroughly here at Katronic, um, and that involves some big boxes like this. Now, you can't see all of it, but you have to trust me. Um, there are 16 servos all along here. It's just too big. It's just too big to get in shot all at once. Um, so if I just plug the board in here, let's see if I can do this from a distance. It is upside down for this. Um, and if I press the big, the big green start button here, oh, is it powered up? There we go. This always happens in demonstrations, doesn't it? Have you got it turned to the on position? Well, that'd be a great idea, wouldn't it? <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. There you can see all the servos nicely waving backwards and forwards here. You've got great control. Forwards and backwards. This is something we do. So every one of these boards we build gets a, a test like this, doesn't it, to make sure that it's working how it should. Um, yeah. Um, so that's not the most interesting test, but you can see lots of them, uh, lots of them running all together. Um, a, a better one would have been that walking robot, and maybe one day our technical director will, will make it walk again. Um, <laughs> I have to give him some time. Um, the final one I was going to show is the robotics board, and I thought at this point it would be good to show uh, how the stepper motor works. Um, so rather than a DC motor, which has uh, got two connections, uh, the stepper motor has actually got uh, four wires because they come in pairs working for the, on the uh, coils um, that you've got inside. Yeah, um, so if people are probably not aware of what stepper motor is, they, they move to an angle, don't they? Yeah, and they're really good for precise control of that angle. So you'll often find them in things like um, uh, 
Uh, 3D printers will have stepper motors for, for moving the, the head the head around or the bed uh, moving so you can get that really precise control. Yeah, our yeah. laser cutters at work, they, they, do, they use them, don't they? Yeah, so they are, they're, they're used in a lot of things, but you, might not, you just might not have come across them uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so we've got here uh, a, little, a little yellow flag, which I'll sort of hold to the side. And you can see I've, I've told it to turn 180 degrees in one direction and then 45 degrees back the other way. And it works really nice and smoothly. So I use the degrees block uh, for that one. Um, I've also got here, just to, just to show some servo control, uh, we've got one of our claws. Um, yeah, the other thing with stepper motors is they've often got a lot of torque, haven't they? Yes, uh, much more so than the DC motors we sell. Mm. Uh, they're much stronger for for not just turning small flags, um, for actually controlling uh, something much bigger and something that you need to... Um, yeah, we, we've got an example. I think you're going to show a little video in a minute, weren't you, Kevin, of something that we, we, we created uh, using... I, I do have, yeah. And the good thing in this shot here, we can see the power LED on as well, which we've, we've not really... Oh, yes, you can see it there. It's very nice. Yeah. Just, although my finger just covered it. You can see yeah. it on and off nicely there. Just gives that, that little visual indicator uh, of what's going on on the board. And I guess fine, I'll just show you uh, some, some servo control. So we've got one of our claws here. This is a servo control, just using one of those little hobby servos there. Uh, really nice open and close. This is the kind of thing you could create, you could create uh, with this board and controlling some servos. Um, yeah. This has got so many outputs, uh, so much you can do with it. Uh, it's such a versatile board and you can control so many things all at once. Yeah, I know we've had sort of fun making a few different projects with this over the years, haven't we? We've sort of done, did we do a blimp at one point that we were messing about with? And... Yeah, I did. So I got involved with it. It was a, it was a, a potential for a school project uh, with some of the people who do uh, race to the line. Um, we, we had some big, some really big helium balloons uh, that we were control using to provide lift for some little balsa wood. Um, airships and then we use the robotics board as the controller with a micro bit to uh, control fans uh, for direction for speed uh, for, for lift up and down um, and that was really good we had there were maybe 20 groups 15 20 groups all flying little airships around inside uh, inside inside a, a lab a lab room um, over in Manchester and that was really good so just a, a bit different to the normal um, wheeled robots that we see all the walking robots uh, this is a great board for, for doing some more interesting projects like experimenting with flight with the micro bit. So, uh, yeah. So while we're chatting away, I will find that project we were going to show. Oh, it's all in the way. So here we go. This is a servo motor driven project that we made. This uses the original all-in-one robotics board, I think. Yeah. Um, but the, 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 it's replaceable, isn't it, by the new version? Yes. Yeah. And one of the, the other benefits to the new version, because the PCBs are physically smaller um, and we've made some other advances, I guess, over, over the years, the price of them's come down. Mm. So um, not only do they have the extra features of the power switch and the LED and other things that we've added, they're also lower cost than those original versions were. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, this is a really nice um, example of a stepper motor uh, in action with getting a really nice smooth control uh, and you could you could get the angles uh, really specific to represent a nice little ferris wheel uh, yeah and the reason to i think to use a stepper motor in this specific specific example would be you know in a fairground ride if you were stopping to let people on and off you would always want to stop exactly in the right position wouldn't you yeah you could easily spin this with um a dc motor uh, but unless you had some other sensor feedback, you wouldn't know that you'd stopped exactly where you wanted to. Yeah. Whereas with a, um, a stepper motor, you would know, wouldn't you? I want to stop at zero degrees or you know 20 degrees or whatever. And that could correspond with these um, carriages being exactly in the perfect position for people. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. And, and also, as you said before, it's got the higher torque. You're, kind of, you're being able to turn something that's a much bigger uh, physical size and weight here. Uh, with with, with uh, relative ease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Um, I had a couple of other screens to show if you... Uh, yeah, I was going to say, we've got also things like linear actuators, haven't we, which, you know, you know they would work well with these boards. Yes, uh, absolutely. 
Um, for again, like you said earlier, you talked about opening and uh, controlling windows, that kind of thing. Um, a linear activity is great, great for that. Uh, I was just going to show a little example of a project that we did a few years back uh, with a 16 servo driver. Um, we only used eight of the outputs at that point, um, but we've got a micro bit. It's hidden behind the back there. But we created this uh, handbell um, playing uh, device for playing some Christmas tunes on a little set of handbells. Uh, and we used a similar thing at our bet show, if anyone came along to that, um, with playing, playing some tunes on there. So each one of these has got a servo. Uh, it controls a, an arm that, that rings that rings a bell. And we made some, you know, some classic Christmas music to, to be playing on there, uh, which was great fun in the office. Uh, and also, just uh, uh, another year at BET, we created the big Katronic City setup. And we had um, certainly had an all in one robotics board and a 16 server driver controlling various things. You can see again, this was uh, the Ferris wheel came out of this. This was the London Eye uh, sort of setup and some buildings that have got a, a mock up of a wind turbine. And this was a robotics board control project. So we had a stepper motor controlling the London Eye and we used a motor driver to, to show like a wind turbine turning. And actually we used at this point, one of the link header breakouts to control an LED to flash at the same time. Um, so it wasn't just uh, motors and servos at this point. Um, it, was, it was other outputs as well. Uh, so that's just a few of the things uh, that we've done, uh, that we've done with these boards. Um, yeah, we really like using them uh, and they're so great for, for those creative projects that you're, you're undertaking at school or at home. Yeah. And there's lots of really great sort of buggy chassis and things like that that you can buy, you know, off the shelf from different places. You know, they might look like tanks or, you know, or various stuff. And, and these boards would be perfect for using with those kind of kits. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've seen people use them to make sort of boats as well, you know, where you're powering boats and then using a servo to give the direction on the on the rudder. Yeah. So there's, there's clearly lots you can do. Yeah. I've got another question then. Oh, and I will say this one feels slightly more technical. So hopefully you can help me, Alistair. <laughs> so again, going back to the um, step motor. Okay. If we've got a six wire step motor, how would they connect? I'm not sure I've seen a six wire one. Um, I must admit, uh, with all the ones that we've got, and we sell it are four wire ones. So it has been set up to, to work with that. I think given that uh, with the all in robotics board, you have got six motor outputs, although the blocks aren't set up themselves uh, for, for controlling across those, uh, I think it would probably be possible if you were writing your own software for this is something like um, uh, MicroPython, um, then it would be possible. I'm not going to guarantee it, um, but I, I can say, cause you've got uh, eight motor outputs. You've got the three pairs of wires. Uh, I'm guessing from your, you know, stepper motor, for three for three coils rather than two um, yeah. and it should be possible with a all on robotics board uh, to control that but it wouldn't with, with our blocks that we've got in make code straight out of the box it wouldn't work it would be standard no and you could only drive one then couldn't you yeah if you, if you could get it to work maybe that's one for us to have a little we can have a little look into that yeah yeah and then um it might be something we could create a little resource on the website or whatever and maybe link from this video yeah or if not we could put the explanation in the video comments afterwards Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, like you say, we don't sell them, do we? So it's probably something we've, we've not really tried, but certainly something we can look into. Mm. Yeah, is there anything else we want to cover off then, Alistair? We've sort of been off about 40 minutes now. Talk through most things. If there's, uh, if there's any other questions that people have got, um, that would be great. We'd love to answer those. Um, I think we've probably given a good overview of, uh, of these boards. Yeah, let me just see if, if there's anything from Mark then. So you can get step motors with four, six, and eight wires. Okay. So uh, there you go. Yeah. Could look up the issues. I think they just have more phases. Okay. I think it's something we'd have to look at, mm. look at properly, really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, don't, I mean, common question we tend to to get a lot is, is powering these boards. Really, I suppose the key thing for people is to make sure that. The power supply they choose is is within the, the range of the motors they're going to want to connect. So, um, you know, it, it wouldn't be any good trying to drive a 12-volt motor with, a you know, a 5-volt supply or a 4-volt supply. That's something yeah. that we, we come across a little bit. 
And it's also probably not to exceed the maximum voltage on the boards because they are they are marked, aren't they? The boards themselves, all of, all, of, all of them are marked, and that is that really is the maximum voltage. Um, for for the boards that have got the motor drivers, it's the motor driver chips themselves that limit that uh, yeah. limit that power, which is why the sixteen servo can take a bit more uh, voltage. Uh, with servos, you need to be careful with the, with the different sizes and the different types. You have got a maximum supply voltage uh, for those, and it is. The, the voltage out for the servos is the direct supply voltage that you that you put in. So you do need to be careful that you don't provide too much uh, then to your servos directly. Yeah. Another thing I, I've, I've come across with projects a lot is that um, you need to make sure that the power supply can deliver the current that the motor needs. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, then the, the voltage will drop away rapidly and that, that can cause issues. I mean, if you're very close to the if you've got a low voltage, so there's not much headroom between what the microbit needs and the voltage that you've started with, and then that voltage drops away a lot because you've drawn a lot of current into a motor and the power supply or batteries can't deliver it, you can get projects resetting and those kind of things. So I think making sure you've got a good power source is is, is, is quite key. Yeah, it's important. Yeah, I mean, we had a guy last week who was, you know, I think he was using two, two AA batteries, you know, which kind of is okay, but... AA batteries will be, you know, they work down to maybe one volt per cell. So two AA batteries could be down at two volts. So it might work when it starts, but then your batteries have got flatter and then it's lower than the microbit needs and all these kind of things. So it's something to be aware of. Um, did, we, did we show a LiPo battery in the connection? I think you did, or did you? Um, I'll, I'll show, I'll show the, uh, what might be a, a, a LiPo connection. I didn't actually yeah. me because I didn't charge one up. But, um... They're often popular in projects, aren't they? Because they can deliver so much current. Yeah, we've got some. We've got a couple of really big um, high current output um, uh, lipo batteries that, that we use. They're two. They're two cell um, lipos, so they go up to seven seven point four volts. So we've used that uh, with some of our higher power servos or, or motors that we're using, and that yeah, they can deliver a really good amount of current. Yeah, even the smaller ones would be good for providing both power to the micro bit. And, and they're extremely lightweight, aren't they? Yeah, so they, they, they can be good. So, so Dave, our technical director, has made a comment. He said six wires are often four wires with a centre tap, so you can ignore two of the wires. This is on a stepper motor. Okay. Um, and you, but you may need to use a, a, a multimeter to figure out which ends of the coils. So it sounds like these things are all, all probably possible yeah. with these boards, aren't they? Just need a little bit of research. Yeah. yeah. Well, great. So um, hopefully that's covered off what everybody would like to know about these boards. Obviously... These videos are going to go live on on YouTube, so um, people can watch them back at the leisure. And if, you know, if people want to comment afterwards on there, we'll, we'll still reply to those. Um, people might want to subscribe to our channel, and you know, because we're, we're going to do more of these tech talks in the future, aren't we? We yeah. sort of try to make them a semi regular um, thing, maybe around these are boards we've released a little while ago, and we'll cover some of those. And we'll also do talks about new products. So if people do subscribe, there'll be, there'll be lots of content coming along. So um, thanks for your time today, Alistair. I was just having a quick check to make sure there's no, no other questions we've missed. Great. Um, yeah, so I think we've covered off everything there. So thanks for your time, Alistair. Not and, Thank uh, you, Kevin. Hopefully I'll see you again at one of these talks in, in the future. Yep, that'd be brilliant. Thanks All right, much. guys. Thanks, everybody.